Good evening and welcome. This regular meeting of the Board of Trustees of the Spring Independent School District is officially called to order on Tuesday, January the 12th, 2021. The time is now 7.04 p.m. Board Trustees present, Winford Adams Jr., Kelly Hodges, Deborah Jensen, Justine Durant, and myself, Rhonda Newhouse. I would like to ask everyone to turn off or silence their cell phones or electronic devices at this time. So at this time, I'd like to ask everyone to rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. Thank you. At this time, would you please remain standing and quickly observe a moment of silence in your own way. Thank you. You may now be seated. Our next item tonight is a superintendent's remarks. So at this time, I'd like to recognize our superintendent of schools, Dr. Rodney Watson. Uh, thank you, President Newhouse and other trustees. Good evening. January is School Board Recognition Month, and we just honored all of our trustees with a special Zoom celebration for all of their hard work on behalf of our district. I say this all the time, but I'm and I'm not exaggerating when I tell everyone the Spring ISD has the best board in the state with trustees who truly care about making a difference for our students and for our staff. It's sometimes a thankless job with long late meetings as many other commitments and responsibilities related, um, related to providing governance, vision, and leadership in support of our mission to educate all students. As I said earlier, I thank you so much for your leadership and your guidance during this pandemic, and I've been grateful for your flexibility to help us navigate the changes that we've experienced. Once again, everyone on the call, please join me in giving our Board of Trustees a round of applause. You can't hear it, but they're clapping. <laughs> As we talk about the COVID surge in vaccines, I wanna reassure everyone that we are continuing to monitor what's happening in our area related to COVID-19. We are all concerned about the recent surge in positive cases within our county and within our community. And I am personally in close contact with area medical providers and area superintendents within the Houston, um, within the Houston area. And we are monitoring um, our, our situation very closely. In addition, our priority is the health and safety of our staff and students as we fulfill our mission to provide daily instruction. This has been an ongoing balancing act and I wanna make sure that I say thank you to all of our teachers, our custodians, child nutrition workers, bus drivers, administrators, police, support staff, and everyone who makes this work possible every single day. We're going to continue to let our employees know about the possible vaccine opportunities as we learn about them and are hopeful that we will soon see more availability. Until then, I urge everyone to continue to take steps we know will help prevent the spread of this virus, like wearing masks and social distancing. Until then, we will keep everyone up to date. 
In addition, later this month, ahead of the next month's board meeting, we will be bringing a draft calendar option for the 2021-22 school year to our community for consideration. Can you believe that? We're already talking about the 2021-22 school year. Our goal is to be able to bring a calendar recommendation to the board in February for approval. We want to be very thoughtful about the process to ensure we bring options that include input from our advisory committee on education, as well as our staff and parents. We know how important the calendar is for our families and staff to start planning, so please keep your eyes open for this survey later this month. Finally, I want to remind everyone about our four asynchronous remote learning days for students. The first one will be Wednesday, January the 27th. On that day, all students, both remote and in-person learners, will work from home on asynchronous assignments that have been provided by their teachers and campus. While no direct instruction will be provided by teachers on these days, all students must log on to Schoology to be counted present and to complete assignments. I want to remind families that if their students need to be on campus, please talk with their campuses, but this will be an asynchronous day where all students will remain at home. And additionally, please let your campuses know if they would prefer paper assignments for their child so they can prepare a packet for them in advance. Our goal is to give our teachers time to plan and collaborate on their campuses during these designated days and we will and we appreciate everyone's support. So once again, I just want to remind our parents that those four days will be asynchronous days and all students will remain at home um, during asynchronous work. That concludes my updates for today. Um, happy Board Appreciation Month once again. This concludes my remarks. Thank you, Dr. Watson. I'd like to ask if we have any board members who would like to make remarks. Well, on behalf of the board, I, I, let me say thank you. I'm sorry. Uh, I you. did want to. So I, I managed to get out to the last spring uh, playoff game. Um, I guess it was a couple of weekends ago now. My time's fuzzy, but I wanted to congratulate the spring high school football team and their coach and players and uh, Principal Melendez on a, a, a hard fought game. Uh, they didn't bear out against DeSoto, but I just want to congratulate them on their season. <clears throat> Miss Newhouse, I would also like to congratulate um, the technology department and other people who are helping get out all our hotspots. It is just amazing how many families are getting to uh, these hotspots and the Chromebooks so the uh, kids can be connected. Uh, this is going to be uh, a, a whole new world of um, connectivity, I think, for our whole community. And uh, it's an amazing thing. Dr. Watson, did you want to address anything about that? Yes, yeah, so we have been working with various prov providers, including uh, grants that we've applied for to get hotspots. And so um, our technology team led under the direction of uh, Jeff Corman and Mr. Miranda, they've done a phenomenal job of, of securing partners and getting grants for us to be able to offer um, free hotspots to all of our families who need them, as well as um, working with Comcast to provide for families who qualify free internet service at home. And so this has been a great opportunity for us to really close the digital divide and connectivity. And so we look forward to increased partnerships, but getting our students and families connected. I'd just like to take a moment and remind our public that our legislators are now in session. And if you have an opportunity to reach out to your local representative and encourage them to continue to hold our districts harmless uh, and supporting us with the appropriate financing we need throughout um, this pandemic, as well as some of our key legislative priorities that we have listed out on our, on our website. So thank you. I would like to also take this opportunity to say a very special congratulations and thank you to Tiffany Don Oldfield. This will be her last meeting uh, with us here in Spring ISD. Uh, we will continue to see her as she will be going to work for the governing board for the school boards um, in the state of Texas as their chief communications officer. And so once again, Tiffany, thank you so much for uh, your leadership to our communications department and all the work that you and your team have done. Very much appreciate it. Thank you and we wish you the best. 
Thank you, Dr. Watson. I'd first like to say thank you to our principals and administrative staff that did a wonderful job in appreciating the school board members before our meeting tonight. We are very appreciative of your gifts and kind words, but please know, we know that we are here to serve you and you are first. Our students are first. And this is just a pleasure for us to work and serve for our students and our teachers, staff, and community. But thank you again. Tiffany, we are truly going to miss you. Yes. We appreciate all that you have done for the board. You work with us graciously. Uh, we depend on your department and uh, we're going to miss you but we wish you good luck and blessings on your new position. Congratulations to you and your family. Thank you very much. And I just wanna say, you know, it's been emotional for me. It was a really um, difficult decision. I'm going to work for the TASB for the Texas Association of School Boards and I'm ex extremely excited. Um, but this opportunity would not have been available to me and to my family um, if I hadn't been able to tell the wonderful stories here at Spring. And I appreciate every opportunity to learn and grow as a professional that Dr. Watson and you, our board, have provided me. And this community, I have always just felt, you know, um, incredibly blessed to be here. Um, today, we had um, a little retirement parade for um, Miss Karen Garrison, who came to pick up her boxes. As you know, she's had, you know, some struggles recently with medical, and she came with her husband today. And just so many wonderful people have come into my life because of spring and so many wonderful um, learning opportunities. And the job in Austin would not be there if it hadn't been for the work I've been able to do here. Um, with you and I'm just, I, I feel really blessed and I will always, always spring. I told Dr. Watson spring will always be my very favorite district in the entire state of Texas. And anytime I have a chance to plug them at the state level, I will. And I just wanna thank you. I think um, said earlier, I think this is an amazing board always about the kids and it's been a true blessing um, to be here um, and to work with you. Thank you. And it was great to hear that sounds like Karen is doing very well. I know we've all sent prayers up for her and appreciate her and understand her retirement, but we are sending blessings to Karen as well. So, so please share that with her. Our next item on tonight's agenda is the ABCD award. So I would like to, at this time, again, recognize Chief of Innovations and Communications, Tiffany Don Oldfield. Well, good evening. <laughs> and we have a very special recognition to share this evening. As you noted, we have an above and beyond the call of duty for a truly deserving staff member. As you know, providing safe and secure learning environments for students was one of the core commitments included in the district's Every Child 2020 strategic plan. And it remains a commitment to this day. As a district, we have engaged in many projects and initiatives, both big and small, to make sure our schools are safe places to learn. All of that work is vitally important, but sometimes keeping kids safe is as much as is a much more basic and immediate calling and a much more personal one. We have with us tonight a spring ISD teacher who recently answered that calling and averted a true crisis through her quick thinking and presence of mind. That's why tonight we would like to recognize Hirsch Elementary School second grade teacher, Diane Moore, Diane, would you give a big wave out to our board real quick? And I'm gonna hold up your award. We're gonna talk a little more about it, but I'm gonna hold this up. We're gonna be delivering 
We only give a few of these out every year. They're very, very important awards um, from our board above and beyond the call of duty. So in December, just before the winter break, Ms. Moore came to the aid of a student who was choking during lunchtime. Knowing there was no time to waste, she utilized her safety training to perform the Heimlich maneuver, clearing the student's airway and resolving a dangerous situation. We want to give her a big round, a round of applause for going above and beyond the um, call of duty and saving one of our students' lives. Can we go ahead and unmic and do that really quickly? Let's unmic really quickly. Yay, Miss Moore. Yay. To give you a little bit more, more. give you a little bit more background on Miss Moore. So she joined our district in 29-20 school year when she was actually named Hersh's Rookie Teacher of the Year. Tonight, the district's gratitude goes out to Ms. Moore for her dedication, her quick presence of mind in this moment of crisis. And I would like to pass the floor over to her principal, then we're gonna pass it over to our board members um, to also congratulate you. This is a really big deal. And while your principal, uh, Ms. Claire Recia, is talking, I'm gonna be holding up your award so that you can see it. Ms. Garcia. Madam President Newhouse, Board of Trustees, Dr. Watson, Cabinet members, Spring ISD stakeholders, good evening. Tonight, it is my greatest pleasure and honor to say a few words about our ABCD awardee, one of our Hirsch teachers, Mrs. Diane Moore. We have all heard the expression, you saved my life. More often than not, this expression is used figuratively. However, on December 18th, Mrs. Moore literally save a student's life. It is one of a principal's worst nightmare, especially on the last day of school before Christmas break, when you hear a call, we need assistance in the cafeteria. We have a student choking. However, as what was mentioned, thanks to Mrs. Moore's quick thinking and skilled response, she was able to perform the Heimlich maneuver and saved our Hirsch collar from what could have been a catastrophic event. Although fairly new to Hirsch Elementary and to the district, Mrs. Moore's dedication and passion for serving our Hirsch Hawks are evident in all she does. Last year, she received the Rookie Teacher of the Year Award. During that awarding ceremony, I remembered Mrs. Moore sharing with me how her son teased her of being given a rookie designation at that point in her life. Yet that award made her realize that it is never too late to follow and achieve one's dreams. To Mrs. Moore, that dream was to be a certified Texas teacher and lucky for us, she chose to serve our school. So tonight, I am honored to present Mrs. Moore to the Spring ISD commit, uh, to the Spring ISD community. This compassionate and dedicated teacher continues to save her students' lives, both figuratively and literally, through her work and servitude. Thank you for your heroism, Mrs. Diane Moore. Mrs. Moore. Thank you so much. I so appreciate it. Um, you are so kind and this means so much to me. I thank you. Um, I have to give uh, the praise to God because his hand was definitely on the situation. Um, I am extremely proud to be a part of Spring ISD and particularly Hirsch Elementary. We have a fabulous leader and a great staff that was there in an instant to support. So I truly am humbled and I thank you very much for your kindness. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Any of our board members want to make any comments before we wrap up this? I would like to add a, a, a real compliment to someone who can take your training, connect it to a situation in an emergency where there's, uh, I'm sure, quite a bit of feelings of, uh, uh, and excitement, and you were calm in the middle of a storm, I'm sure, when you did this uh, life-saving event. Uh, we are 
really blessed to have you. Thank you. Miss Moore, Thank I want to so add, much. I'd like to add my thanks to you for for again being level headed in a crisis situation and doing what teachers do. Um, you know, I just it, I, I'm really this sort of emphasizes why I think we do this work and you know teachers are dedicated to the kids. You, you're, you're in on lunch duty and you're eyeballing everything and you're paying attention on the last day before, you know, winter break when maybe you, 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 there's an opportunity to check out at that time. I really appreciate you. And I just wanted you to hear me say that. Thank you thank so much. Thank you so much. I sincerely appreciate it. And I also want to thank Dr. Rosilla because after everything was done, she knew I needed a moment and she took my class. And so I sincerely appreciate her leadership and I thank y'all very much. Thank you, Ms. Moore. And that concludes this, this ABCD award um, this evening. And again, thank you to the board. We will get this to you tomorrow, Ms. Moore. Um, congratulations. Thank you, Ms. O'Phil, and thank you to Ms. Moore for your, hey, your service that was really beyond the call of duty. An award given for saving a life is, yes, Tiffany, the highest honor that we can recognize. Thank you. Thank you. Our next item is agenda participation. This item allows members of the public an opportunity to speak on agenda items before those items are considered by the board. Mr. Binkley, do we have anyone registered to speak under agenda participation tonight? No, Madam President, we do not. Okay, then we will continue. Our next item is the public hearing for annual report of the district's educational performance and the Texas academics performance report. So at this time, I'd like to recognize our Assistant Superintendent of Research of Accountability and Testing, Dr. Jennifer Cobb. Thank you, President Newhouse, members of the board, Dr. Watson. Today, we're going to review the um, Texas Academic Performance Report. Uh, the report has not changed since we went in depth with it on Thursday. Um, so we'll do a, a, a quick highlight of the slides that we covered and then in, take any additional questions or thoughts that you have. So the Texas, Texas Academic Performance Report, or the TAPER, is produced annually by the Texas Education Agency and it's disaggregated by ethnicity, economically disadvantaged, English learner status, English language learner status and special education status. We, as part of the Texas Education Code, Chapter 39, we are required to have a public hearing, which is today, uh, within 90 days of the release, which occurred November 20th of last year. Last time we reviewed the student population by race and ethnicity and compared it to the region and the state. As a reminder, we uh, noted that our, our overall enrollment has gone down and our Hispanic population continues to be the largest um, ethnic population compared um, to the other, other groups. And as far as the demographic breakdown from the district, in, the district region and state, we, are, we have a higher population of African-American and a smaller popula population of white compared to the region and to the state. We also took a look at the ethnic composition of the students compared to the teachers. As we noted, the um, African-American population between the students and the teachers are relatively close to each other with teachers now um, at a higher percentage than students. For Hispanic students, there is um, an underrepresentation of teachers that are Hispanic as well. And for white, the opposite, where there's an overrepresentation of white teachers compared to white students. And then you see on the right-hand side, the distribution of the smaller um, populations that are reported and they are relatively similar, similar students compared to teachers. We also went over the economically disadvantaged 
status uh, for the past three years, as you can note, 1920 saw a large jump for the district with 82.6 percent. Uh, we also discussed that um, for this year preliminarily, it, we ha are at 87 percent, and this is a result of um, the required online registration of parents. So really, this is better um, capturing of our family's economic status rather than a change in the population overnight. And this is higher than the region and the state, and our uptick is a different pattern than the region and the state. Looking at AP and IB, we noted that the, part the participation on the top bar graphs, ha participation has increased over the past four years. And we also noted that the in the smaller uh, or in the lower bar graph that our participation of those meeting the criteria of three or higher has gone up as well. We also discussed the SAT and um, per, SAT and ACT participation. It was noted that we do do um, SAT day for our juniors and we will again this year. So our participation rates may be lower due to COVID, although it's being offered to all students if they do want to come and take the test. Um, and because of this um, SAT day, our participation rate in SAT is higher than the state in both the overall and then the subpopulations reported. And look at, looking at the ELA and writing, uh, we noted that um, for our subpopulations that are reported, our performance is lower than the region in the state, but notably, we are also testing all of our students or the, major, the large majority at 90% or higher compared to the region in the state that may be only testing their college going students. Similar results you'll see in math for those subpopulations. And looking at advanced course and dual credit course completion, we are, we are again looking at um, the overall students and um, race and ethnicity groups. Again, we're below the region and the state. However, we are trending upwards and we're trending in a similar pattern to the region and into the state. And looking at the same information, but also taking looking at the subpopulations of special education economically disadvantaged and L's, you can see that our um, special ed population does uh, does lag behind the all student population. However, um, we are scoring higher than the region and the state in these courses. And then for our L's as well, you will see a significant increase um, over time between 2016-17 and 2018-19, where we are very close to the region. This, uh, this next slide had uh, quite a point of conversation about um, the found the graduation plans that our students are graduating from for this in this case this is class of 2019 uh, we noted that our, our population has a higher percentage of students graduating on the foundation plan endorsement uh, it should be noted that the foundation plan distinguished is the highest level that could be achieved um, through some um, review of data in investigation, we found that some of this is the result of students taking the option of um, not taking Algebra 2, which is not a graduation requirement. However, it is a requirement to reach the distinguished level of achievement. So further work will be done by the, our, our counseling department and by our high schools and our assistant superintendent of high schools. The next slide is the four-year longitudinal graduation rate. You will see it by again by all students, African-American, Hispanic, white, and Asian. Of note to hear that we are, uh, are having conversations of about and um, wanting to definitely address is the decline in our Hispanic population graduation rate. As you can see, it's been trending downward and now is at 82.2%. And looking at the graduation rates for the other subpopulations, we discussed that for special education, there was a peak and then a decline. Um, some of this can be attributed to that there is a different graduation coding that occurred. And also it has to be considered with special education that um, continuers do count against our graduation rate. But for special education, you would have a population of students that are continuing on until they age out. 
for our elves, um, we discussed that our elf population is growing considerably in 2019. Our elf population was 25.4 percent and uh, for 2020 it was 28 percent and that's a trend that we've seen over time that our population is growing. So our elves are graduating at a much lower rate than desired and it's a population that's increasing for us. So that is going to definitely be an area of focus and has been an area of focus, but we have to be more laser like on that. For our, for our longitudinal dropout rates, again, we're going to we looked at all students versus the race and ethnic populations. You'll see that we are relatively close to the uh, region and the state for the groups that are uh, on the screen now. When we move to special education, economically disadvantaged and ELDS, our economically disadvantaged is comparable to um, actually it's it's lower than the region and state, which is the majority of our population. Um, however, the special education is not is higher than we want it to be, and the L population again, along with the lower graduation rates, we have a higher dropout rate that needs to be addressed. The next set of the data is looking at the students once they leave us and graduate. So we talked about how um, the, it's three years worth three years worth of data, but it lags two years behind and that our uh, percentage of students enrolling in Texas higher education has declined slightly over time, which is follow, following the pattern of the region and the state. And one year of, um, of Texas higher education without remediation has remained relatively stable, although behind the region and the state. And we also discussed the multitude of, of um, activities and focuses that the college readiness department, then the CTE department will be, uh, have been doing and will continue to do and to expand to better these numbers. Finally, we went into staffing. Um, on the top table, you'll see the definitions um, of who falls under those different categories. As we discussed on Thursday, our educational age, aides, campus administration and central administration administration are relatively similar to the region and the state. Um, in comparison, our auxiliary staff is higher, teacher percentage is lower, and our professional support staff is higher. And looking at the degrees held, as we discussed on Thursday, our, um, we have a percentage of, of teachers with no degree. For the most part, those uh, are our CTE teachers that have industry experience that can then, um, that they can then teach um, without a degree. Looking at our bachelor's degrees, they are lower than the region and the state. However, our master's and doctorates are higher than the region and the state. And looking at years of experience, the points that we noted is that our beginning Teachers are high, the percentage of them is higher than the region in the state and has increased from 1819 to 1920. For one to five, six to 10, and 11 to 20, we are relatively similar to the region in the state, and our over 20 years experience is lower than the state. As we also discussed, the salary average. Um, Spring ISD is in region four and therefore has a on it by that alone, it has a more competitive salary compared to the state. And then, as you also can see, we're higher than the region in every category. And one attribution to that is that our stipends are also included in the salary averages. Finally, the other required reporting uh, will go over the accreditation status report on violent and criminal incidences. PEMS financial standards report, you will be receiving a paper copy. And we previously presented in the October 2020 public hearing, the campus performance objectives. For 2020 accountability rating, we're not rated, declared state of disaster due to COVID. 2020 special education determination status needs substantial intervention. 1920 accreditation status, we are accredited, 2020 first rating, superior achievement. And finally, looking at the violent or criminal incidences, uh, we discussed that for us, the PEMS code 04, which is the possessed, sold user was under the influence of marijuana or a controlled substance, was one of our highest indicators. 
and also fight, number 41, fighting in mutual combat with 1,324. This overall total of 2013 is represents a decline from last year where it was 2,816. Um, some of that can be attributed to the work that is being done on discipline, as well as the, the COVID closure for the last three months of um, 1920. And that concludes the presentation. What questions do you have? Thank you, Dr. Cobb. Do we have any questions? I know we covered this I, on- I just uh, had a comment. Uh, apparently the Pima uh, report is asking for the data in percents many times. When uh, the absolute number of teachers, for instance, uh, is also important data. Uh, why doesn't the PEMS include that? So, uh, the, the teachers who are, are who are assigning the discipline to it? Well, uh, let me get a for instance. Yes, please. I'm looking at uh, our staffing. Oh, staffing, okay. And I don't have a uh, page 19. Okay. Let me see. Okay, I found the page numbers, yes. And it shows that we have 42.6% teachers mm -hmm. when the region average is 48%. And I just think it would be very interesting to see the um, actual uh, teacher to student ratio. Okay. And that is, that is reported in beams, or in, I'm sorry, in taper, so we can sure, definitely provide sure. that. Sure, I, I could look it up myself, but I just think that other people might be interested as well. No, I agree. And uh, uh, is the reason why we have a lower percent of teachers is because we need more auxiliary staff and professional support? I think a lot of this has to do with how we um, categorize ours. I think in, in some of the beginning taper reports, um, we didn't actually show the names of the positions and different districts um, place their emphasis in the different areas. And so um, we base our teachers on our staffing ratio and that changes, it goes up and down. Uh, we actually decreased the staffing for the middle schools. You all um, voted to allow us to go to 28 to one from the 30 to one. And so um, that's just based upon the, um, how we do our staffing. In some districts, they have a different staffing formula for their ratio for students. And so that will all play a part of that number. I know with the middle school, uh, you're having pullout groups to help certain groups of students that need extra tutoring. So would those uh, extra tutors be auxiliary or professional support? The tutors, are, they're consider, are, we're talking about the full-time, the fellowship, like the math fellowships, they would be considered professional support. Okay, that, that's what I thought was going on is that we were getting specific targeted uh, help for kids. Thank you. Um, I have a sort of a pet peeve slash general comment. Um, this is a really nicely done report. I appreciate the way the Department of Research and Student Success Measures uh, disaggregated uh, all the different sub pops going beyond sort of racial designation. So I like that the ELL is in there and the economically disadvantaged is in there. I think when you're going to have a hearing though, a summarized report of the taper is insufficient. And I, I think I would like to see the actual primary source documents in addition to this. So I still want this, but I actually want the tapers from this, the most recent year and the year before. Um, I, don't, I don't think it's appropriate to call this a hearing without those documents. So uh, I guess now that we know that that's what you all want, we can definitely do that and make that available. Um, again, to you all, um, Dr. Cobb, if you can work on just emailing that to uh, Mr. Brinkley, we can just send that again tomorrow. I actually, like I looked that stuff up, so I'm sorry.
In the interest of total transparency and clarity of what we're doing, we should provide that to our public. And again, in addition to this very well done report, um, primary source should be there. I, I will tell you as a part of the requirement of taper, uh, we do have to post it on our website and we do post the campus tapers on each individual website as well. Um, so th there is definitely, there's the TEA access as well as we make it accessible to them um, in a more easy format like the campus websites, but we'll absolutely provide those. And district-wide, anybody who's listening to this who is not aware of the taper, that you can just go into the TEA website and uh, look up Spring ISD and get uh, not only this year, but years and years and years of data. You get as right. much and data as, a, as you want to deal with. <laughs> and I, I believe it was, it's been three years now. There's the paper taper and then the um, website taper. Um, so we mainly report off of the paper taper. Um, lovingly called, where the website even has even more information and more in depth. And um, so you can go much deeper on different measurements. Yeah, I shouldn't have said taper because we had other names for these reports in the past. AEIS yeah. was yeah. the yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. Academic <laughs> Excellence Indicator, yeah. Yes. Thank you, Dr. Cobbs. Mr. Binkley, do we have anyone registered to speak on this? Agenda item under public hearing tonight? No, Madam President, we do not. Okay. As there are no identified speakers, let us continue with tonight's agenda. Our next item is the consent agenda. I will now entertain a motion to approve and adopt all of the items listed on the consent agenda. And to our public, the consent agenda is compiled from the reports and presentations that were made during our work session this past Thursday. Madam President, I move that the Board of Trustees approve and adopt all of the items listed on the consent agenda. Do I have a second? A second it. It's been moved by Winfred Adams, second by Justine Durant, that the Board of Trustees approve and adopt all of the items listed on the consent agenda. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please raise your right hand. The motion carries unanimously. The Board of Trustees will now recess this open session and convene in a closed meeting in accordance with the Texas Open Meeting Act sections 551.071, 551.072, 551.074, 551.076. No voting will take place in the closed meeting. Any action the board wishes to take as a result of discussions in the closed meeting will take place after the board reconvenes in open session. The time is now 7.47 p.m. We will now reconvene and resume the regular meeting of the Board of Trustees. The time is now 8.45 p.m. There are no other items on tonight's agenda, so I will now entertain a motion to adjourn our meeting. Madam President, I move that we adjourn the meeting. A second. It's been moved by Deborah Jensen, seconded by Kelly Hodges, that the Board of Trustees adjourn this meeting. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. The motion carries unanimously. There's no further business. This meeting is officially adjourned at 8.46 p.m. <laughs>